Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I'm going to show you a few things really, really quick. This has to be a super short video because I'm already late to get on the road uh, to go visit some family for Christmas. So, um, first things first, we have a Schrade Sharp Finger. And this thing is going to Adrian. And uh, he asked for a simple sheath, <clears throat> just black on a tech lock. So you guys know how I do. If it's on a tech lock, you're going to have a funky grid pattern here or drill hole pattern. It's going to allow you to orient it for a vertical carry, the way you see it now, a horizontal carry, or canted for a cross draw. And this is totally ambidextrous, especially since it's just uh, just the sheath and the clip, no extra accessories or anything. It's, uh, it's very versatile and easy to switch sides. So, Schrade Sharp Finger Sheath going to Adrian. Uh, next we have a Leatherman OHT sheath with a coast... Uh, I actually don't know. HX5 is the model on this thing. It's a little bit, it's a, a telescoping head on it, kind of like a Cree, whatever those are called. Um, so that fits down in there like that. You can technically orient it that way as well. It's a little bit tighter. I set it up that way with the bottom just slightly tighter than the top um, so that it would ride comfortably like this. And when you need it, you can just push up like that and it would be free and clear. Uh, the OHT, as you know how I do my sheaths here, it is an auto-deploy sheath for the pliers. So as you draw them out, it deploys them. As you put it back, it collapses them again. Um, you can squeeze the handles together and avoid deploying the pliers if you want. Uh, you just have to put a little pressure on that rail system by doing that. And when you want to deploy them, the best way to do it is just by grabbing one handle or really lightly spanning both with your thumb and one finger on each handle. And you get... A really good draw every time. It's also ambidextrous. Not ambi. Well, it is ambidextrous, but it's also bidirectional, meaning you can flip this. Uh, it doesn't matter which face of the OHT is outward; it'll work just the same. This is also on a tech lock for vertical or horizontal carry. And also, this is a. <clears throat> I don't really know what else to call it. I guess it's like a low-profile flashlight design. Personally, I prefer the flashlight to be over here on this edge of the sheath, uh, but you can see just by curving the kydex around and getting a little bit um, a little bit uh, tricky with the, the way we get the screws in there we can actually mount that just like that so it's kind of pinned in place and hides the hardware all at the same time so not that that's necessarily a good thing but that's what the customer asked for this one's going to Robert black carbon fiber sheath and lastly I have a SOG Voodoo Hawk now this is a Tomahawk by SOG and yeah, I accidentally showed it. Uh, some of you guys have probably seen the other video I did on one. And uh, the customer here asked for... Um, there was a, a TDI sheath I did with gray basket weave over red carbon fiber, blood red carbon fiber, in like a cracked eggshell kind of pattern. So he asked if I could do that to his. And then he also asked, uh, if you're noticing the weird texturing going on here he asked if I'd be able to somehow do like claw marks in the surface like uh, like the black bear uh, you know so uh, I did my best with a Dremel it's not the cleanest looking thing and I wish it showed up better I almost think it might show up better if this weren't already a textured kydex because uh, your eye tends to focus and create like if you're looking over here uh, it seems to my eye like the pattern continues uninterrupted so my brain is probably just filling it in and making it uniform until I actually really look at these sections. But um, I was able to get the claw marks in kind of a pretty, well, not kind of, it was very, uh, they're all very straight. Um, well, they're curved, but what I mean is they're all connected, like the they're not, uh, what am I trying to say? All right, how I did this, maybe that'll answer the question of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I formed the second layer here, and then I just used a pencil to etch, or just stencil, essentially, what I wanted for a shape on the claws. And then I used a sanding drum on a Dremel, and uh, I traced the outline of those pencil marks, and then I just kind of went back and forth and filled them in and tried to make the center the deepest. After I made the claw marks, I cut all these, you know, cracked shell look uh, channels in it. So, uh, with that done after the fact it was you know it helped me to make sure that the claw marks actually looked like they were done in one one swipe 
So um, I know it looks a little bit funky, a little bit, um, it's not the cleanest look, but I think it's kind of cool. And when you get the right light on it, you can see those, those claw marks kind of like that. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, this is going to Jordan down in Florida. Jordan has ordered a couple things off me, uh, and he, he's been waiting for a while, and I really appreciate his patience. But, Jordan, I hope you really like this, man. I think this came out great. And uh, we also had an Exotac Fire Rod XL on here. It's just a longer version of the Fire Rod. Um, he asked for mollies on the back, and since the color scheme was black basket weave and blood red carbon fiber, uh, and he wanted this cracked eggshell look on it. <clears throat> but since we were going to be doing mollies on the back, how I have to do that is on a floated plate so that it doesn't affect the retention but also gives the mollies enough uh, rigidity to, to be useful. Um, <clears throat> so I couldn't do the cracked eggshell thing with the back layer. It really wouldn't be a good idea because if I did it to this, this piece would be very weak. This front piece is not all that strong. In fact, I actually uh, used a, uh, a very powerful bonding adhesive to bond the top layer to the back layer. So after cutting it, after getting it all sanded and fitted, um, I literally put glue on the back of this black basket weave and while it was still wet, uh, touched it to the, to the blood red carbon fiber so it would have glue on both sides. This particular stuff, barge is what it's called, requires some time being wet to set up before you adhere them together, uh, the two surfaces. So I did that to make sure that I didn't you know, get any glue in between the cracks on the on the carbon fiber, and then I stuck it to it once they were ready. So it's got a really strong bond now, but the piece in and of itself, uh, you know, just holding that piece, it's extremely weak and flimsy because there's, you know, a bunch of cuts in it. So I can't do the eggshell on the back, but I wanted to get that blood red carbon fiber back in there, so I put a little end plate on it. I thought that looks cool. Um, you probably won't see it much since... This is the Molly side. It'll be riding on a pack like so, or a vest, or whatever you carried on. Um, <coughs> but that's what we did with it. Um, to get the Exotac back in holder, I would definitely recommend just pulling this paracord off to the side, and then you have a, a pretty clear view of that Exotac holder. Use that shock cord to secure it, and you're good to go. Now the paracord is actually fairly necessary on this. Of all the hatchets I've ever worked on, the Voodoo Hawk, this is the second one I've done. It is the hardest one I've had to work on as far as getting good retention goes. Um, or actually, well, yeah, good retention, not too much retention. So it, by nature, wants to be way too much retention. Um, so I have it set up here. You want, let's see. All right. So it's a little bit stiff to push it into the sheath, but when it's in, <clears throat> once it's in there, it's really in there. How you want to get this out, grab the back end near the spike of the paracord handle and I just get right up close to the sheath with my hand on the handle of the hatchet and you want to separate the spike first and then when you put the, the hatchet back in you want to go blade edge first and you can kind of seesaw it back on if you have to. So um, yeah, that is what we have. So I'll give you one really close up look at this I think it came out really nice the edge work is uh, really good and uniform everything is smooth and uh, yeah it's just a cool sheath so if you guys like that pattern let me know what you think I've shown it to a few people and uh, a lot of them really liked it the Instagram post I did with that TDI got a lot of good feedback so uh, I think people kind of like that idea um, but yeah it's I'm not really sure it's supposed to look like an eggshell per se but Whatever, just cool design. So give me your two cents down below. Let me know what you think of the Voodoo Hawk in general. And uh, definitely give me some thoughts on this guy here, Shred Sharp Finger. This is kind of a classic knife. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys. If you like these sheets, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. Definitely comment down below. And I appreciate you sticking around. Tune in for the next one. And everybody, please have a safe and happy Christmas and uh, New Year and all that good stuff. So I'll see you again. Uh, probably first of the year. All right, guys. God bless.